is time for Team of the Week, Ben. And we're going to get started behind the plate. Your catcher of the week, Salvador Perez. Oh, I'm excited for this Team of the Week, Alex. By the way, yes. let me just say, okay. I say it every single time, but Team of the Week runs from Sunday to Saturday. So the the Sunday that just happened will count to next week's stats. Every week. I, I get crap online, Alex, of how is so-and-so he just hit eight. <laughs> he hit 18 home runs on Sunday. Well, guess what? Those will count for next week. So uh, from March 31st to April 6th of these dates, and we're starting with Salvi Perez yeah. friend of the pod behind the plate. Cause he just hit 464 with two homers, Whew. nine RBIs, a 1.197 OPS. All right. Moving up to first base, Bryce Harper. Yeah, Bryce Harper didn't have a hit entering the <laughs> these dates. March 31st yeah. to start the day, didn't have a single hit. He hit three homers in a single game to break out to break out of his slump. Hit 381 on the week with those three homers, seven RBIs, and an OPS over 1300. This is kind of my thought with the with the with the Phillies. They just never like click early all at the same time. And then it's just like, they all figure it out at different times. And then come August, September, they're all clicking on all cylinders. Bryce Harper just feels like the first of them to, to really lock in and he's going to Bryce Harper's great. So another yeah. great week. They're going to be just fine. They're going to be just fine. Yep. Let's move to second base. Jose Altuve. Yeah, Altuve, another great week for him. 435, three homers, 10 hits and OPS of over 1400. Uh, this guy's just the staple of consistency. I feel yeah. like I, every time I talk about Freddie Freeman, I feel like I say staple of consistency. This guy is just Mr. Consistent. Well, that's Jose Altuve on the American league side. And he's the best second baseman, uh, in Astros history, arguably one of the best second baseman, not arguably, he is one of the best second basemen in the history of major league baseball. He's great. I love Jose Altuve. What an incredible dude. I, a friend of mine. I love the dude. Happy to put him on this list. He had a great week. All right, let's move over to third base. Isak Paredes. I, yeah, Alex, we talked last week about how, hey, you know, like maybe we should, you were really keen on me continuing to talk about fantasy baseball because you love uh -huh. how much I bring that up. I had Isak Paredes on my fantasy team last yeah. year and the guy led me to, the guy was great. And I really do feel like he's one of the more underrated players in the game of baseball. Everyone says, how do you look up at the end of the year and see the Tampa Bay Rays in the playoffs. I, I don't get it with that roster. And it's because of guys like Paredes. That's well, great week, 350, three homers, seven RBIs and an OPS over 1200. But this guy's going to hit you at 30. You know, he can hit you 30 homers and it's just an underrated name in the game. He's great for them. He's huge for that lineup. Another good week. All right. Moving over to shortstop, Jeremy Pena. Yeah, and Astros, uh, Astros middle infield here. Yeah. 381, two homers, six RBIs, and an OPS over a thousand. If Jeremy Pena can can be what he was, I want to say 2022 playoffs, but that's not fair. He was, you know, he was one of the best players in the playoffs when they went on that run. But yeah. you just need him to to continue to take steps forward. And last year I felt was a bit of a step backwards for him. I think Jeremy Pena is great, and I, I think he can be a really good shortstop in the big leagues. And uh, it, it seems like he's heating up. So I'm excited to see that, you know, it's early in the year. It's early April, but I'm excited to see the year that Jeremy Pena has. It's hard when you're getting like MVP in the different levels of the oh playoff. Anything after that is going to be like, well, is he living up to that? You know, you set the bar really high right out of the gates. It's sort of like uh, Randy tough. Rosarena in the playoffs and world base. Like he's like the greatest player of all time yeah. in the playoffs and playoff world baseball Randy. classic. And then playoff Randy. And, yeah. and then he, he starts the year or in the regular season. He just doesn't live up to if, if playoff it's Randy tough. was regular, if he, if it was this, if he was putting up the same numbers in the regular season, he'd hit 350 with 60 homers. And the fact that he's not yeah. that guy just makes you think, okay, he's not living up to expectations. And it's like, well, no, just let's pump the brakes here with, take a beat. with Jeremy Pena. He's yeah. a guy that took over for Carlos Correa at uh -huh. the time. One of the best shortstops in baseball had a great first year, Incredible. a great playoffs. And then a little bit of a sophomore slump. And, and now I'm excited to see how he rebounds from that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move to the outfield. And remember with the outfield, it's just three outfielder, not necessarily by position or in order. So let's get started with the guy we've been talking about already. Spencer Steer. 
Yeah, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. He had 500 on the week with three homers, 10 RBIs, slugged over a thousand. He was really he he really does do it all for this team. And I thought uh, opening day early on in the year, he was hitting a little too low in this lineup. He was hitting like seventh in the lineup. And I was like, good Lord, this guy's way too good for that. And now here we are. And they've bumped him up a bit in the lineup. He's hitting against righties. He's hitting against lefties. He's hitting go ahead homers and extras. He's hitting grand slams and extras. This guy, Spencer steer so good so far has been the key to the, to the red success. And offensively, once guy after guy started going down and, and Friedel and Matt McLean, it was like, now, where are you going to get the production from? Is, is Ellie really going to step up? And, and Spencer steer has been the guy to prove he's, he's ready to break out. I think he's a breakout star of 2024, as we talked about earlier. And he's the first of three outfielders. Yeah. He's that guy. Let's get to our second outfielder, Jaron Duran. Yeah, Duran and the surprising Boston Red Sox. He hit, he hit 462 with a homer, four stolen bases, on base percentage of 500 on the week. So, yeah, the Red Sox are surprising some people, and and Duran is breaking out himself. We can talk about Spencer Steer being a breakout 2024 star if the if the Boston Red Sox end up somehow putting together a, a good year. And I'm I'm not trust me, I am not saying the Boston Red Sox are making the playoffs. But if there is a world in which they do make the playoffs, Jaron Duran is going to be a Netflix superstar. I know. I'm like, I can't wait to see the behind the scenes of all this <laughs> Netflix documentary we're going to get. Yeah. They need this. The show needs this. Maybe that's why they're playing so well and they're off to such a good start because the cameras are on. You kind of have Maybe. to turn it on. You take it to the next level because you're trying to impress everybody. <laughs> Who knows? It could be the best thing that happened to them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Our final outfielder, Seiya Suzuki. Yeah, Seiya Suzuki also having a, a breakout year. Look, Seiya Suzuki so far in his career has shown signs of being really good and just gone through. If you look at the second half of his year last year, it was really good. So if if you were if you were putting people on a bingo card to start the year of who's who's an underrated guy to potentially go out and put up like MVP type numbers. Seiya Suzuki should be one of those guys just because of the raw talent and ability he has. Uh, this week, he is my third of three outfielders in no particular order. Hit 391 with two homers, 11 RBIs, and an OPS over 1,100. Okay, let's move to your designated hitter of the week, Marcel Ozuna. Yeah, Ozuna is one of the reasons this Braves lineup is is so deep. You yeah. can bat him in the lower half of the lineup, and he hit 429, three homers, seven RBIs, and OPS over 1,400 on the week. The Braves lineup is absolutely absurd. And, you know, you, you can point to the Braves lineup and say, hey, why is this lineup so good? And you'll point to Ronald Acuna. You'll point to Austin Riley. You'll point to, to Matt Olson and, and Michael Harris II. And one of the later names you would mention is Marcelo Zuna. And the fact that that's the case is speaks volumes to this Braves lineup. So he's my DH this week. All right. Your starting pitcher. It was also your spotlight player last week, Ronel Blanco. Yeah, this one shouldn't be surprising to anybody. And again, this list goes from Sunday to Saturday. Ronel Blanco did start on Sunday and he did very well again, but it doesn't count for this week. Yeah. But what does count is his no hitter throwing nine innings, punching out seven guys, only walked two, didn't give up a single hit. And it's just the story for me. It's the story that I spotlighted last week of the guy was in the hospital all day long, having his second child, a baby girl, and with his with his wife there and didn't go to the stadium until the last possible second, didn't know if he was on the opening day roster, went and threw great, made the team, came off the mound, found out he made the team. And then in his first start a week later, throws a no hitter and his eighth ever big league start. So it's just cool. it's so an cool. incredible story. It really it's is. It's so cool. All right, let's wrap things up with your relief pitcher of the week, Emmanuel Classe. I did. I mentioned him earlier. The yeah. Guardians are playing, I, I would say, surprisingly good baseball. Yeah. And he's been at the back end. He's one of the best closers in the game. Absolutely there. Three innings pitch, three saves, four strikeouts, two hits, and not a single walk. Uh, you pass the baton to Emmanuel Claus in the back into the bullpen. You feel really good about your chances to win. And every single time that they pass it to him this week, they, he got the job done. So he rounds out my team of the week, but Alex, I want to go to my player of the week and yep. I'm going to rewind just a, a one player. My player of the week is, is Ronel Blanco. It's, yeah. it's the story. It's the no hitter. If he threw a no hitter, he would 
99 out of a hundred times be my, my player of the week. But the fact that it's the story that it involves. And I, I honestly think if we look back on, you know, whatever day the season ends, November 3rd, I don't know. I made that up. If we look back on that day and say, what was the feel good story of the year? We're going to point back to one of them. If not the best feel good story being Ronel Blanco uh, for, for what he just went through and how he made the team and, and how he was told and then throwing a no hitter in his first start. And then by the way, following that up with continuing a no hitter into his second start for Quite a bit of time yeah. ended up going 14 and two thirds innings pitched without a single hit given up to start a season. That is 44 consecutive outs without allowing a hit. That's the second longest streak at any point in the season, certainly to start a year for the Houston Astros. Mike Scott did it in 1986. So it's just, it's a, it's a historic stretch is what it is. So also this stat one or zero hits in a two start span in 15 plus innings since 1901. Again, this is a two start span. This isn't just to start the year. Ronel Blanco did it obviously this year in 2024, and it hasn't been done since Max Scherzer in 2015. And before that, Dennis Eckersley in 1977. So the stretch that Ronel Blanco is on right now is pretty historic. He is my player of the week which concludes my team of the week. Alec, I, Alex, I want to ask your, your player of the week, but to conclude that's Salvi Perez behind the plate, Bryce Harper, Jose Altuve, Isak Paredes, Jeremy Pena, Spencer Steer, Jaron Duran, Seiya Suzuki, Marcelo Zuna, and then you got Ronel Blanco and Emmanuel Classe. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest, and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.